Hello guys, my name is Desmond and I welcome you to my lesson for today where we'll be looking at your mathematics. So ladies and gentlemen, as always, please do allow me to say it is very much important that I say it is very, very much important because honorable members, what I'm about to say, it's massively, 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 hey, massively important, ladies and gentlemen, that I say a day without learning something new, it's a day wasted. Boy, below, please. Please, 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 guys, please do make sure that by the end of each and every lesson that I conduct, you learn something new. So, for the last time, I will just indicate that please have your mics muted so that we don't get disturbed by the background noise. Okay, I've just noticed uh, they muted their mics. So, Bantu Bagiti, I'm just going to quickly, quickly, quickly take you through what we discussed on yesterday's lesson. I won't go deep into that, but what I'm going to do is just to refresh your minds and give you a very quick summary of what we discussed. So if you are able to just grab a screenshot of that or otherwise I'll make sure to send that information in the group. So this is what we discussed in a nutshell. We discussed a functions. Yesterday it was our very first lesson on this chapter of functions. So we did discuss a straight line, a quadratic function, a hyperbola, exponential is what we did not discuss, of which after taking you through everything, we will quickly discuss exponential towards the end of the lesson. We will discuss a question paper sent in the group. So remember guys, uh, just in case if I'm breaking, just in case if it's blurry on your side, just make sure to let me know immediately. The reason to that is so that uh, we make sure that the lesson is being uh, recorded without uh, any challenges. This is so that towards exams when you want to catch up, uh, you won't struggle to, um, you know, get all the information that was discussed in this lesson. So now, uh, let me quickly refresh your minds regarding a straight line. So I won't go deep into that. I'm just going to be very, very quick, simply because I'm trying to avoid a duplicate of the same lesson that was done yesterday. So number one, straight line. So as a learner, you should ask yourself, what exactly is a straight line? Row Z, in simple terms, a straight line is just a line which is straight. Remember, I said we draw functions on a Cartesian plane. What is a Cartesian plane? A Cartesian plane has these two axes, the vertical axis and the y a, no, no, the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. The horizontal axis is what we call the x axis, and then the vertical is what we call the y axis, having quarter number one, quarter number two, quarter number three, quarter number four. Those are what we call the quadrants. A Cartesian plane has got four quadrants. This point where the horizontal and the vertical line intersect. It's what we call the origin. That is why sometimes they'll just have an O over the. So based on what we discussed yesterday, we said this is the general formula of a straight line. 
And most importantly, for you to plot a straight line, you need two things. What are those two things? I said is two points. So that is why we can say point A in a form of coordinates and also point B in a form of coordinates. Coordinates have got the X and the Y, X and Y. When you get to varsity, that's where you deal with the X, Y, and a, what is it? Z. So it's not by mistake that in most cases you solve for X. It's because in high school, you're dealing with X and Y. And then when you get to varsity, that's where you include Z. So it's more like you study things in 2D. When you get to varsity, you study them in 3D. But for now, don't worry that much about that. So let's quickly see. So that means you might have point A, which is somewhere there. You might have point B, which is somewhere there. By connecting those two points, can you see? That's how you form a straight line. On the same set of axes. When they say on the same set of axes, it's more like you're having a plate and you are having a very nice putu there. Eastern Cape. Manje, on the same plate, you can still have your drum stick. Good people, on the same set of axes, you can have your drum stick. That's what they mean when they say on the same set of axes. But most importantly, we did say they cannot repeat the same letters. On functions. So that means they will call that a point C and then the next one point D. So a uh, three things can be done as far as a straight line is concerned. So you're not audible. Kuli, can you confirm if all is clear now? I noticed I was a bit disconnected there. Yes, sir. All is clear. I can hear you and I can see what's on the screen. 100%. So... I was saying, uh, as far as a straight line is concerned, you can sketch a, a function. A, you can determine an equation from a sketched a, function. There are more questions that you can answer in relation to that a, specific function so just bear in mind you will understand all of those as we continue but most importantly as far as straight line uh, is concerned i did say we are having that letter being letter m m we said is the gradient which is changing y over changing x which means y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and most importantly, we said the C value. It actually refers to the vertical shift. And we t when we talk about the vertical shift, vertical does not mean upwards. It means uh, up and down. So the moment I talk about vertical, just think of up or down. But now in maths, how do you know if something has shifted upwards? That's when it has a positive value. Maybe, for example, positive 2. It means it has shifted upwards by 2 units. If maybe it's negative 3, this negative means down. The positive means up. And then 2, it tells you by how many units it has shifted. For example, a straight line passing through the origin. 
if it is no longer passing through there and it passes maybe somewhere there that means that straight line which was there it shifted by one two units downwards that is why that c value is going to be a negative value and most importantly regarding your m you can either have a positive gradient or a negative gradient so for all the functions ending in this quadrant and that quadrant they have a positive m and then for those ending in the second and the fourth quadrant they have negative gradient so this information is for you to know if you've done a mistake in case if a question comes in relation to a straight line so all that i quickly explained it's there in the lesson that was done yesterday and it was posted in the 2023 uh, tests and videos so that's where you can access that lesson and catch up so quickly let's discuss number two being quadratic so i'm just going to take away that and quickly explain what a quadratic function is so uh, that is number two we said it is a something similar uh, to that maybe let me start it where it actually starts y is equals to x squared so remember at all the times a cartesian plane uh, needs to be drawn so that a, we can draw our functions on a Cartesian plane. And I said the shape of a parabola is like that or like that. That is the shape of a parabola. So just remember there that we are now on a parabola. Or quadratic function. So it's either examiner can use the word parabola or quadratic function it refers to one and the same thing so now when you have something similar to that it means um you are dealing with a quadratic what makes it to be a quadratic it is that power of two so that means every time when you are given a function you need to know whether it's a straight line, a parabola, a hyperbola, or an exponential. As time goes on, you will get used to those type of functions. It's mainly four of them that you need to be aware of. Okay, so now let's see. We did discuss that there is an A value over there. And we said the A value, it is the one that determines whether you are going to have that type of a function or that type of a function. 10b, I want to tell you now that uh, there is always an explanation to everything on a REBOL member. Mathematics, it's not like it's just a complicated um, chapter or subject. Uh, it's really not a complicated subject what makes it complicated is you not knowing the starting point of mathematics where math starts is where uh, i've started this year guys make sure that you catch up my very first lesson that i've done on the second of this month because uh, that's where I explain exactly what mathematics is and everything builds up to today's lesson. Nothing that I'm saying is new. So that means whatever that I explain, it has to make sense, not by fire by force, but it just has to make sense. When it starts not making sense, I'm going to tell you that uh, this is where it gets complicated and you will notice how we deal with uh, such situations okay so now let's see what do i mean by the a value determining 
a, the shape of a parabola. This is what I discussed with a Mule Wuhen yesterday. Mule Wuhen said when her mood is positive, uh, she's always smiling. So that means when you have a positive mood, uh, you are smiling. This is now the shape of our function. And for it to make sense, that's if we do uh, that. So that means when you have a positive A value, which could be, for example, y is equals to positive 2x squared. That means the function is going to be smiling. And it makes a U10 right there at the origin. I'm going to explain quickly why it makes a U10 at the origin. So now uh, I'm pretty much sure that uh, when your mood is negative, you will be sad. Obviously, a having that shape and for it to make sense that's if we do that then you will realize that if you are having your a value being negative that's how your function will look like uh, you might have something like y is equals to negative 3 a, a no no negative 3 x squared so can you see this a value it is the one that determines whether you are having a sad or a smiling shape that's all bantubakit. Now let's talk about why that function makes a U10 at the origin. It is because a, the general formula it doesn't end there. A, it is y is equals to a x squared plus q. That's where the q comes in. The q being the horizontal, no, no, the vertical shift. But it looks like for this and that, there is no Q. If there is no Q, I'm telling you guys, that's where you might be confused and wonder how does it work if there is no Q. But listen very carefully Q, it is not there, meaning in place of Q is nothing. What is nothing in mathematics? Nothing is zero. So that means Q, it is there as zero. Because it is zero, because it is nothing, there is no need to write it. But you need to know that it is there. Just like when you have X plus X. It's not everyone who see X plus X there. Those who attended my lesson for the very first time this year and last year, this is what they are seeing. They are seeing invisible positive 1, x to the power of invisible 1, plus invisible 1 to the power of invisible 1. Someone who's attending my lesson for the very first time today, they might be seeing x plus x. But I'm telling you now, there are a lot of invisible things in mathematics of which when we reveal those, it then makes sense. So that zero, it is there. Where is it on the function? Can you see? We said this is the origin. At the origin, that's where you are having zero, which is where that zero is. Let's now try to explore uh, some other things in relation to that. Remember, I just said Q normally refers to the vertical shift, just like C uh, under straight line. The vertical shift. Vertical means up or down. So that means a function can shift upwards or downwards. So now a uh, Let's try to shift this function downwards. Assuming that it is y is equals to, because it's positive, let's say it's positive 2x squared. If we want it to shift downwards, then we must have a negative value there, maybe negative 2. Why negative? Because a negative means down. And it's going to shift down by two units, meaning it is going to shift one two. So that means it will no longer make a U10 at the origin, but it is going to make a U10 there. 
at where x is equals to negative 2. So now look what happens. Can you see? We therefore have the x intercept there, the x intercept there, which is where that smiling shape touches the x axis. That's when it gets complicated in maths. But if you do not know what makes the x intercepts, it gets even more complicated for you to understand and interpret the questions. Remember, guys, all I'm saying now, I did explain all of that in yesterday's lesson. That is why I'm going to take my time to just take you through an introduction very quickly. So if I have to shift this one by three units, maybe up, let's say one, two, three. Remember, uh, it's wise equals to negative that. Uh, it's going to be a positive three there because it has shifted upwards by three units. Very, very much important, ladies and gentlemen, over there. So something that I want to add, of which I did not explain uh, on yesterday's lesson, uh, as far as a parabola or quadratic function is concerned, uh, is this, what we call axis of symmetry. From time to time, I'll be mentioning uh, that axis of symmetry. Just in case if you are hearing this word for the very first time, it might sound like it's something very, very complicated. Very, very complicated. But listen to what a uh, Kulahano uh, will be saying. The coolies, are you still there, honorable member? I'm not sure if Kulahano is there. Uh, let me quickly check. Hamisa, are you still there? Yes, still here. Okay. Uh, Hamisa, let's talk. Uh, I've got a slice of bread. Hamisa, can you tell everyone in this classroom how are you going to cut that slice of bread so that yourself and your little sister uh, won't fight? And uh, by cutting that slice of bread into two equal halves, I'm telling you, uh, Hamisa and her little sister will never fight. Why? Because this slice of bread is cut into two equal halves. Mule are you still there? Uh, I want to tell you that this line is what we call an axis of symmetry. That's all. So, in summary, it means an axis of symmetry is a line that cuts whatever into two equal halves. So this slice of bread, you can cut it um, also in that manner. I think, uh, hey, are we going to fight if I cut it in? No, 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 no. I don't think we will fight if it's cut uh, in that manner. Uh, no, I don't think so. Even if you cut it in that manner, I think you can still achieve a goal of cutting it into two, uh, two equal halves. I think also, even if you cut it in that manner, you might get away with that. But imagine if you had a slice uh, of bread and your mother says, can 